Hello, Stephen White, Trickboy89 on Steve Arts 89 Thank God, the Orville got its groove back. Um, the last couple of weeks, I was really disappointed. Um, after the two-parter identity, which was amazing, I was a bit disappointed that they just had that little two-parter and then boom, it didn't really affect anything. Isaac's back sitting on the bridge, like nothing happened. Um, and we had two really boring, predictable, next-gen rip-off episodes. Um, we had a holodeck romance and um, someone coming out of somebody's past to be a terrorist and oh no, they have to stop with just like a couple of episodes of Star Trek. It was, I started off loving the Orville because of its tone and its spirit and um, how it explored ideas and that um, and, and themes just like Star Trek, how it took that Star Trek um, aesthetic and um, all that and ran with it. But then for a couple of weeks it just got stuck in just, yeah, it didn't work for me. I tried not to bitch too much when I did my little reviews, but thank God this week they're back on. Um, okay, this week episode called Sanctuary, <laughs> I've forgotten the number. Um, it starts off uh, basically the Mocklands, um, uh, a couple are being transported and we discover that they are transporting female Mocklins to a planet where they've been hiding and growing um, as a separate culture and um, a separate um, community for years. So um, Bordas finds out, lets them go because frankly he doesn't, he, his time on Orville has opened his mind, he values women, he doesn't have a problem with, he, obviously he wanted his child to remain a girl, um, he doesn't like, he's, he doesn't respect his culture's traditions on that level, um, he has broadened his mind, opened his mind, and unfortunately his husband doesn't, he doesn't assimilate, he doesn't respect the women of the ship, he doesn't associate with them, he, he holds tight to these ideals, and that's a big source of conflict between the two of them. Now the episode starts off with um, Marina Seardis doing a cameo, which is amazing. Um, she's playing the teacher, and we do have a next generation moment where um, the, the, the son, who was a girl, but has been changed to a boy um, due to their beliefs, is, his name is Topa, he is in school being an asshole. Uh, much like Alexander did, um, because he's a Klingon, and um, plays out a lot like uh, the scenes in Next Gen, which of course had schools on them because they had families on them, just like Orville. And Marina does a good job in a two little scenes she's got. Um, she's gorgeous. I've met, met her a while ago. We, we all love her. Everyone loves her. Um, he comes down on hard on him, but his partner doesn't, and there's, there's that conflict again. And then he discovers that the people that uh, are taking the child to, they lied. They said they said they were going to a planet where they had sanctuary, so they could raise the child as a girl without um, being chased by the Mocklins, because obviously they no one you know talks about this secret planet that they've been hiding women on for generations. Because there are a lot more female that are born than we we're led to believe at first, and that the culture teaches. So, but naturally, the little asshole of a son. I'm never going to monetize my videos so I can say what the fuck ever I want. Um, <laughs> I got 25 subscribers. I couldn't monetize if I wanted to. Um, <laughs> um, fuck, he's an asshole. He, of course, tells. So then, of course, it all falls apart. They go to the planet and yeah, it all falls apart. Eventually, the Mocklins find out about this planet and, of course, they come in like the most toxic m masculinity creatures ever conceived. And, of course, um, the women want to claim basically asylum and just basically want to just live on their own and just do their own thing and be left alone. They don't want to change Mocklin society. They don't want to be accepted and taken in. They just want to have their own world and, you know, fuck you. They can have two separate single-race um, societies. They're fine with that. But of course, the men have to pull their dicks out and say, look how big my dick is, suck it, obey me, do everything I say, which is just they're standing at this giant meeting, basically slamming their, <laughs> their dick on the thing, saying, <laughs> should we use an analogy? It's just like, we're the men, obey us, do, do, 
we're going to have a hissy fit. We're going to pull all our weapons. You will not have your big dicks to go out and, you know, compare to all the other big dicks in the in the universe with your guns, basically. Yes, I'm using a really loose... It's not working, but I don't care. I'm just going to go over it. Yeah, basically, they're threatened, so they have to show force, which is we will withdraw all our weapons. You will have no alliance, no hope. The crew will kill you. Um... So, and of course, all the scared little men up the top are, are saying, oh, let's just abandon all our ideals because what's the point of having our ideals if we're dead? Um, and of course, you know, the captain says, well, what's the point of living if we don't have our ideals? So he kind of wins that debate. I mean, with us he does, and he kind of wins it. But then the Mocklins start, pre -met, just go in and start... Uh, taking the women back and of course the brass allows um, for some miscommunication uh, to the Orville so that they intercede and um, probably the best moment and it's so cringe but so brilliant and I loved it was the, the use of Dolly Parton's 9 to 5 in the episode basically uh, the Cap Captain Mercer and the, the female who, um, the New Zealand um, alien is, because um, she's got a New Zealand accent, I don't know why, but she uh, is travelling in a shuttle to Earth and he, she's talking about what are the women like on your planet. Now, I wish he'd hit, and, and he basically sh says, there, she says, do they write? He said, yes, they're artists, they do a lot of things. And he puts Dolly Parton on. Now, personally, I wish he'd picked Madonna's Express Yourself because I thought that is far more relevant and iconic and it's the 30th anniversary of that song it would have been great but Orville had to go with the humor so they picked Dolly Parton's 9 to 5 which is about more specifically women's rights in the workplace and equality whereas Madonna's was a general equality between men and women so I would have loved to express yourself but they picked Dolly and of course she just latches onto this with no understanding of the context of Dolly Parton or the song or anything and it becomes her fight song <laughs> and it's funny and I thought it was going to stop there but no when she makes a giant speech to the whole of the Federation <laughs> she starts quoting Dolly Parton the start of the song and it's hilarious and you can see um, the Admiral looking at him like oh how did she find out about Dolly Parton why is she quoting Dolly Parton but fortunately a lot of the other aliens are not going to have any clue what she's talking about anyway and just get what she's saying about the cringe humour of, of, of this. So, But I was, I was jumping around like a little girl, like, oh my god, Dolly Parton! I love Dolly Parton. I saw, I saw her live a few years ago and the whole stadium was up on their freaking feet. A lot of them were drunk, uh, singing 9 to 5. I mean, it's Dolly, it's iconic, how can you not? So, of course, at a later scene when um, they are fighting and the women are fighting against the Mocklins trying to not be taken of course they kick into 9 to 5 and it's a, and then they go onto the ship the ship is fighting their ship in space and 9 to 5 is the soundtrack for the whole fight scene and it's it was good it was it was good it was it was camp it was funny it was cringe i don't know i i did love it i did love it but part of me hates me for loving it cuz you know the Orville does have that level of promised it was going to be a comedy they have to pull that out and I feel like it kind of undermines the overall serious science fiction show it could be but it wasn't supposed to be but it was trying to be but it was sold as but it wasn't blah, 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 blah. there's that conflict for me with that where I have cringy moments with the show but then I kind of love it for that reason as well but last couple of weeks I haven't been loving it because it was a bit just cut and paste next gen but this one they were all about sexism all about um, gender equality and <laughs> not genital mutilation, not having the women having to be changed, just really important issues told through the veil of science fiction and a different race and the safety of, oh, we're talking about this race, it's just fiction, it's just blue people, you know, people with antennas, you know, that's how Gene did his social commentary in the original Star Trek. And it still works today, and I loved it, and it was great, and I'm so glad they're back on the game, because I've been, I've been more excited for Discovery the last few weeks than... Um, Orville, partly because they've been off for several weeks as well, which really hurts. It loses momentum and you just, you get a couple of weeks of discovery and you're not even thinking about Orville. So 
I'm glad it's back. I'm glad they pulled this out of their asses, and it was great, and I loved it. And I'm just looking at my old-fashioned written with a pen notes, <laughs> because every time I try and use my computer for my notes, it goes on a standby, and then I can't put it back on without it looking incredibly awkward. So I just stick to my notes on my lap, which means I look down a lot. Um, but yeah, she gives an epic speech, and then she goes into Dolly Parton, and it was brilliant, and then cringe, and then brilliant, and um, yeah, it was it was it was kind of predictable that the Mocklins would, you know, put their dicks out on the table and be like, you know, we are the biggest, do what we say, and of course the little white men are all running around going, oh, we're gonna uh, we need our lines, uh. and of course Mercer stood up and said, what is the point of us being here if, if, if we're going to just cave to bullies? Um, even in the face of annihilation. And of course he pulls out the fact that you can't take them on, you're going to die too, and the only thing left is going to be this little race of Mocklin women out in the middle of nowhere, which, you, you know, is going to be protected by us till the very end. So I don't know if that turned them, or if it was supposed to turn them, but between that and everything else, they caved, they accepted and let them have their planet. So it was a great show, great story, and happy ending because they've now got this place, this this sanctuary, and they can build, take the next step from there. And I loved it. Um, and I hope, and the, and the planet was in a nebula that was pink, so it was a big pink planet of women. It was fabulous. Um, I'm looking forward to the next episode, um, and I'll be doing another video on that. And please feel free to make comments and give me any advice, because I'm a new YouTuber and I'm trying to work out how to actually give good video. So, <laughs> um, I'll see you in the next one. Um, hopefully, Orville will be back next week. I haven't checked, but um, thanks. Bye.